um, it's pleasing to everybody's ear, then you bring your ego into it. But until that, focus on the song. And, and, and I'm not really being critical about the song itself because I think they're both good songs. But I think that also they're putting tens on tubes. They need to just focus on making a basic, good sounding chorus. Like Huey Lewis in the news, right? Huey Lewis in the news, they've never put tens on tubes. They just had some great songs with great harmonies. Great harmonies. And that's what they need to focus on. Make a good song with good harmonies. Like, okay, Needed Me The Most, right, by Chicago. Damn good song. Damn good song. And the harmonies are perfect. Now, I don't know if they're going to be able to ever do that live. Because you can hear stacks of Neil all over the place. But as far as the sound, and as far as the continuity of the um, choruses and the harmonies to, um, in relation to the music, it's perfect. It's perfect. You know, they took a blueprint from Peter Cetera, 1980s, though. That was a blueprint. And David Foster, they took that blueprint from them. But it's perfect. It fits it perfect. When you listen to Steve Perry, when he sing, um, I'll Be All Right Without You, right? It's not too much going on. And I think that with um this Generation Radio, with the two songs they have out right now. Now, I can't speak on the album because the album hasn't been released yet. But the two songs that I heard, they're putting tens on twos. They need to remove that extra top part that Jason is singing. Just take it off or either take that harmony and bring it an octave down. You know, sort of be pleasing to the ear. Or you could just do a three part harmony and put a stack on each part. So it'll sound thick and full and it'll be pleasing to the ear because you can't. You can't have a pissing contest when you're in the studio. You can't. The only thing that, that needs to drive you is making something that's going to benefit the song. Period. And I often have to tell my artists the same thing. You have to focus on what's going to make the song great. Focus on that. Do not focus on how big your dick is. Don't focus on how cute you are. Don't focus on who's better than you, who's not better than you. Don't focus on that. Focus on what is going to make this song great. If you focus on that, nine times out of ten, you're going to get very, very good results. Now, will it be a hit song? That's for the masses to decide. But at least make the song to the place where... Your focus is on what's going to make this song great. That should be your main focus. Not that you're wearing your hat matches your shoes. That's some bullshit. Focus on what makes the song great. And I think that Generation Radio, they didn't do that. They, they put tens on twos. They said, okay, we're going to stack this high, you know, full of harmonies. And they actually, because um, they had actually performed a lot of the old Chicago stuff. You know what I'm saying? About a month ago. And I watched it. It sounds good. But you can also tell, and let's just be real. You can also tell that they're not going to be able to deliver a six-part harmony or a five-part harmony live. They're just not going to be able to deliver that. It's not going to sound right. Like, they probably could do it because it's five of them. But it's not going to sound cohesive like on a record. So just take off that top harmony because it's just too much. Put the, Take the top harmony off or either bring it down an octave. So it'll sit right there in the pocket and it'll be pleasing to the ear. You can bring the top harmony a little later. You know, in the end of the song, you bring that there, you know, just to bring some excitement and everything when it's fading out. But don't put that all the way through the song. And and, uh, and Jason Chef, he, he probably should have done his homework because when I listened to that solo album that he did about a couple of years ago, it was terrible. I said, yo, dude, you shouldn't have even done that album. You shouldn't have even done that album. Terrible. I was like, yo, what the fuck you doing? 
and the, and and look, the actual songs, the, the 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 actual songs themselves, the way they were done originally, were not terrible, but he turned them into like a cheesy karaoke sounding song. What you doing putting karaoke on on a record and trying to sell it for what? I mean, it was terrible. And when I had my A Weapons page up, I even told him, you need to call Dwayne Bailey immediately. You need to call him and, and have him help you with this album. Because, dude, you shouldn't have done that. Put cheesy synth strings. I mean, it was terrible. It sounded just like a Casio, a, a 1980s before MIDI Casio keyboard. That's what it sounded like. I'm like, bro, come on, man. I understand that you got to do budgets and shit like that. But, dude, you could have done better than that. And that really upset me to hear him do something like that because he should know better. Because we're around the same age. He's probably maybe just a little bit older than me because I'll be 54 September. So he's probably like around about in his late 50s, approaching 60. And he should have just said to himself, look. Let me not put anything cheesy like that out. That was terrible. It sounded like an Atari video game. <laughs> but Jason should have just done his homework. And what you have to understand too, a song should be as simple as possible. Now, you're going to have some complex stuff like on um, Bohemian Rhapsody by um, Queen. That is a very complex song. Right? But it is as simple as you could have made that song. And it's the same thing that applies here. Just make the song simple. You know, like the old saying. Well, two actually. Less is more. Right? And... Kiss, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. That's all I got. Once again, shouts out to the almighty LDBC. That's LDBCSports.com, TicketTVMedia.com, TrillTalk.net, and A Weaponry on Shopify.com. My name is A Weapons. Peace.